Miami Sports Always from to homies in Miami. All righty, guys. Episode 25, the Sports Spectator Podcast. It is Monday, May 27th. And John, I have a question for you. Scale of 1 to 10, how free are you the rest of this week? I'm... You're taking too long to answer that. The question is, you're 100% free because today, Memorial Day, that is what we're celebrating. We're celebrating freedom. We're celebrating America. And most importantly, we're celebrating our quarter century episode. So now you know. I don't care what else you have going on this week, John, whether you're booked or anything. You're free. We're free. Basically, the rest of this week. We went from Taylor Swift, 22. We went from Jordan, 23. We went from Kobe, 24. And now we're with America, 25. Wow. What a trend. The quarter century episode. And to properly celebrate the quarter century episode, we have, again, all the takes that you guys love on today's episode. So we got a lot to talk about, John. All right. I know it's a long weekend. We're recovering, but we're still going to give you everything that you need to know regarding Miami sports. I'm going to go ahead and kick us off, if that's okay. We got to talk about the Miami Heat, obviously. And yes, I'm well aware you're probably thinking, John, well, these guys aren't even playing. Like, what are we going to talk about? I got to talk about the fact that the Boston Celtics, they have the most Mickey Mouse ass run that I've ever seen into the NBA Finals. Yes, I am fully aware that they beat us in five games. Yes, they, I mean, they humiliated. They destroyed us. We still won a game, though, in Boston. So, I mean, that, that just proves even more how much trash they are. That does count for something, I will say. You know, they, we got a gentleman sweep. All right, we obviously didn't get completely <laughs> sweeped. You know, when, when, when you win 4-1 to one in the series, it's called a gentleman sweep. I just learned that, by the way, John. Better than, better than a 4-0 sweep. Though. Better All than right, a 4-0 sweep. But we still lost, you know. It was painful to see. And now we are in the trenches. We are in the offseason. But... Again, I've always said it in this podcast, I am a hater first and a fan second, and I'm here to say that the Boston Celtics have had the most Mickey Mouse run of any team making it into the NBA Finals. And yes, I am aware that at the time of recording this episode, they haven't technically made it into the NBA Finals, but they're up 3-0 against the Indiana Pacers, and again... That's I, a joke in itself, but they're playing the Pacers in, exactly. in the Eastern Conference Finals. Well, well... The Pacers actually do have a pretty nice team, man. Like Halliburton, Obi Toppin, McConnell. All of these guys have actually been putting up uh, crazy numbers. But here's, here's my main reason about why it's a Mickey Mouse run. They've literally, every single team starters has been completely injured. The Heat, Jimmy Butler was out. When they played the Cavs, again, Mitchell, he was injured. He was preparing to come to Miami. Yeah, he's, he's getting prepared to come to Miami, which we will, we will touch on that. We got to discuss that. Um, and now they're playing the, the Pacers, and their best player, Tyrese Halliburton, is out. So you come and tell me, New England, city of Boston, how that is not a Mickey Mouse run. Like, I'm sorry, even if you win it all, this is not going to count, okay? And I doubt that you're going to win it all, they're because not, not. most likely you're going to be playing against a pissed-off Kyrie Irving, all right, after, he undoubt after they undoubtedly beat Minnesota, all right, and he's coming in. With the full rat of, again, whatever religion it is he's practicing now. He's, he's going to go in looking for blood. What, what religion do you think that is? Is he Hindu? Is he Buddhist? Is he pagan? Am, am I allowed to say it, or do we think that's a cancelable offense? Oh, no, it's not cancelable at all. Re freedom of religion. We're in America. America we're the land of the free. I think, I'm going to be honest, I've been watching him. I think his, he's probably established a new religion, <laughs> which is Baal. The religion of Baal. I don't know how I can begin becoming a practicing member of the church of ball but he's been fucking balling like Kyrie irving i was a big hater of his because he was just saying dumb shit on Twitter. i think i'm still a hater honestly i, I, st I still don't like and, it and, and and that's fair that's fair the guy creates hate from other ball watchers but i will give respect where respect is due and again I, I i would like to join the church of ball that Kyrie irving has established like the guy has been phenomenal luka Doncic. Has been sensational. Is it Doncic? Donic? How? What is it? Doncic. 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 Um, I want to see Kyrie Irving throw an alley oop to Luca and just have him dunk on Jason Tatum and or Jalen Brown, dude. In the finals, that would be. They're gonna they're gonna destroy Boston, dude. I, There's no chance they win. I fucking hope so. I just hope they just get obliterated in the finals, just so that this take of me saying, and again, I will reiterate it as many times as I need to this episode. That the Boston Celtics had the most absolute Mickey Mouse ass run of any teams going into the NBA Finals. 
I'm sorry. Like, it, it doesn't count. Even if you were to win it all, there would have to be an asterisk next to this trophy. Because, again, the East, like, it was completely hurt. I don't know what, like, I don't know. There's, there's no debating otherwise, okay? And if you're a Boston fan and you're seeing this, please DM me and tell me how you haven't had the most Mickey Mouse ass run of any team in the NBA Finals. The only other one that I can team that I can think was even easier was the Lakers when they played in the bubble. That was also a Mickey Mouse ass run. Maybe you're asking yourself and you're thinking, well, didn't the Miami Heat play in the Finals? And that's besides the point. We were an underdog, okay? It was different. It was different. But Boston... Mickey Mouse ass run. I'm gonna do a. I'm gonna do a highlight of Luka Doncic dunking on Jalen Brown and or Jason Tatum. Yeah, just just like that, just like that for the highlight reel. All right. <laughs> Bookmark this. Save this reel when we when we post on Instagram. When when they when they win, you can you can reflect back on it. I think it'll be a, a one for one visual of uh, what's gonna happen. But yeah, no, I can't. I don't like Kyrie Irving. Um, I respect him as a baller. I have, I have him a lot of respect because he wanted to be his own guy in in Cleveland. He got the opportunity in Boston. It sucked. And uh, I really thought he was going to destroy the Mavs. I thought he was going to go to the Mavs and, like, ruin Luka's career. But I was Dude, completely wrong. You know what? I will agree with that. I thought when he got picked up by the Mavs that he was going to ruin He was going to ruin uh, Mark Cuban's franchise. Mm -hmm. Okay? Which, by the way, I'm hearing rumors that supposedly he's going to be running for president. Um, he's got my fucking vote. Mark Cuban, like, the next election? I'm 2028, here? supposedly. He's getting ready. Yeah. Wow, are the Mavs the paycheck for his campaign slush fund? Probably, I guess. Supposedly, he's like in the process of selling the franchise. I think he may have even sold it already. Full disclosure, I have not kept up to date with this news. This was like some bullshit Twitter account. It was like Mark underscore fake account 570775. That was his username on Twitter said this. And I'm just running with it. Yeah. So. Or it's to pay for his uh, lawsuits that he's going to get from helping and supporting FTX and stuff in crypto. That could also be it. But I will fully like, hey, Mark Cuban, if you're watching this, we will happily support your presidential campaign. Uh, send us at DM, reach out. We'll be happy to collab. Um, we got a lot of people. Gold Gala. Yeah, sponsor us, Gold Gala. <laughs> Mark Cuban Gold Gala. Mark Cuban 2028 Gold Gala. Naming rights are up for sponsorship. Mark. <laughs> Please reach out. <laughs> Which, by the way, John, speaking of Gold Gala, do we want to give a shout out to that? Give the uh, the viewers a reminder of what's going on and when that's occurring? Yeah, June 23rd. If it's not in your calendar right now, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, but put it in your calendar. Google Calendar, Apple Calendar, Microsoft Outlook, your notepad, your your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your dog's calendar. June 23rd, it's a Sunday. USA's opening Copa America match versus Bolivia. No one cares about Bolivia. Respect to Bolivia. Sorry, but USA's opening match. This is Memorial Day weekend. This is the land of the free. This is USA. Anyway, watch party. 6 p.m. Going to be absolutely lit. We're playing at, at Cathedral Soccer in Wynwood, Miami. The game's at 6 p.m. Before that, we're having a huge 66 $3,000 prize. Bussin Trophy Tournament. Broadcast live. Professional photography. It's going to be the best players in Miami. We've got a couple spots left for teams if you're interested. Gold Gala, G-O-L, Espanol, baby. G-A-L-A, goldgala.com. I'm obviously already bought into the event, but holy shit, I'm like bought even more. So again, that address is Gold Gala, G-O-L-G-A-L-A, goldgala.com, goldgala.com, for our Latino listeners out there. Be sure you're there, okay? If not, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, all right? <laughs> That was beautiful. That was beautiful. <laughs> All right. Moving on to a couple other topics. Um, again, bringing it back to Heat basketball. Uh, John, I got to get a couple things off my chest, man. The fucking offseason. All right. I know that NBA playoffs are still happening, but for all intents and purposes, the NBA is, is done in my book. Okay. Like, aside from watching Boston's downfall, which, again, will inevitably occur. That's going to be a sick final. That's I'm talking be, shit, but it is going to be cool. It is going to be. Yeah. It is going to be sick. Okay. Uh I'm excited for it. Boston's downfall. Like I'm gonna be tearing up. I'm gonna I'm gonna be playing the Boston Pans as if the Heat were to win the finals, just witnessing the downfall of Boston. Like I cannot fucking wait. I'm also excited. Like you know how like when they when the finals come, they like you know they, they show like the, the 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 superstars like partying and getting fucked up. It's so like yeah. Jokic like partying. The Luka Doncic, John Doncic highlights of him partying are gonna be insane. I feel like he's gonna like. Become like outer body experience, like celebrating, dude. 
I gotta actually tell you something. I don't know why I didn't mention this earlier. So I was at the Bad Bunny concert um, yesterday. How was that? For, it was incredible. Just since it, the guy's a stud. Like he is the Jimmy Butler of music. Okay, <laughs> like straight, like straight up the goat. All right. But um, so one of his songs, I don't know if you've heard it. It's called La Jumpa. Okay. Uh, one of the lyrics he basically says, he says Luca step back La Jumpa, basically referencing Luca step back. Jumper thing. Wow. Now, why do I mention this on today's episode? I think it's a little bit of foreshadowing because he did play that song yesterday. And the very second he said that Luca step back like jumper, the entire arena literally did a step back and you could see them making a shooting motion. Wow. And if that is not foreshadowing as to how Luca will be obliterating the Boston Celtics during the NBA Finals. I don't know what is, okay? Consider it biblical. If you're, um, um, what's the word? If you're superstitious, <laughs> that's the word I was looking for. If you're superstitious whatsoever, take that as a sign, all right? Luka Doncic, NBA Finals MVP, and he will be hitting the daggers. Shout out Bad Bunny, okay, for the show yesterday. I can already see it. That's so great. That's that. Eastern European, American, and Latin American cultures colliding. We're all coming together to just hate on a common enemy <laughs> that is the region of New England and the city of Boston. I just, I, I fucking hate Boston so much. <laughs> Terrible city, high taxes, awful infrastructure, chicks are busted, guys are weird. There's nothing good about Boston. Bars I'm closed sorry. at 10 o'clock at night. Bars closed at 10 o'clock at night. You could, you could. You could not pay me to to live there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, moving on down. I think I'm done shitting on that entire region. Um, heat off season, bro. It is not a an off season without uh, Mitchell rumors. Okay. Uh, so again, Donovan Mitchell, big big rumor mill around him coming to the um, the Heat. Okay. And again, I never consider it a proper off season until the Heat are like claiming that we're going to get some huge superstar and we're back on this common one of us getting Donovan Mitchell. So, John, I know that you're probably not as spiritually invested into the Miami Heat as I am, but what are your thoughts on that? It'd be awesome, but I'm just nervous that it's the same thing as it's it's like it's even better. I feel like than getting um who was the who was the guy from uh, Dame. Dame. I feel like it's even better, which makes me nervous because if we didn't get Dame, then this is maybe even too good to be true, even better to be true. So, I mean, it would be awesome. He, didn't he drop, like, 50 in the playoffs? Oh, yeah, dude. He fucking popped He's off. He's a stud. He is a stud. And all right. But I've been hearing these rumors of Donovan Mitchell, I swear, like, even before COVID. Even before Jimmy Butler came on to the Heat, I swear there were rumors circling. And I'm going to be honest. Miami Heat, you have broken my heart, okay? There was a trust between us, okay? And you guys betrayed that trust, Okay. When you didn't sign Damian Lillard, okay? And I'm not going to believe anything until I get an official confirmation from the Miami Heat themselves that we have actually signed Donovan Mitchell. So until then, I'm not buying into anything. But low-key, I am buying into it regardless. Like, it just, it doesn't matter. But I'm skeptical. I'm scared. I'm skeptical. I want to if... give you a more realistic situation and see if you hate it or how much you hate it. Because I don't think you're going to love it. How much do you hate this? So today I was on Instagram, as I am every day, <laughs> and uh, I was um, I saw that J Paul Wall, no John Paul, John Paul, who's the guy that played for the Wizards? John. Oh, John Wall. John Wall. Yeah. John Wall. John Paul. What the fuck? <laughs> um, and his son is enrolled in like a South Florida soccer team, so he's in South Florida. John Wall to the Heat. How much do you hate that? I fucking hate that. <laughs> I would hate that so much. I would be so upset. John Wall, no like no disrespect, but I, I I just don't see him like I don't know what value that he adds at this point in his career. Would it dude, be a gas? A dude's gas. He he is, and 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 no disrespect, you know the guy could if, if I went one on one with him, he could easily drop like ninety seven points on me, and like I'd be lucky to score three again. But I have not played in the NBA, so no disrespect to John Wall. Sensational player, sensational guy, but I just do not see how that moves the needle forward. Again, I could see him maybe as a player's coach, sort of in a, you know, a UD type role. Yeah, you know, he's got a lot of veteran leadership, but this he, he's not the missing piece. We need a Donovan Mitchell, okay? Yeah. That's what we need. We need a young star, okay, that's still got a few years left in the tank. 
And I'm sorry, John, like no disrespect for you. Feel free to come on the podcast if you disagree, but I don't think John Wall is the answer. He definitely wants to come here. I know that much. I'm, I, I feel like, why wouldn't you want to come to Miami? Okay, how about this though? LeBron. I saw the rumor late. The latest rumor was that he is going to go to Atlanta because people are saying Ronnie is the number one draft pick because it's like an, a guaranteed acquisition of LeBron James. I have heard that. And to me, it's all smoke and mirrors. First and foremost, if you sincerely think that Bronny James is NBA caliber player, like, I don't think saying the phrase you do not know ball encompasses enough how little knowledge you have of the game of basketball. The guy is not a good player, okay? He played, he's played one season at USC, and on top of that, wasn't even the best player. Like, I don't even think he was a consistent starter, and I don't even think he was the, play, the best player coming off the bench. Wow. If this guy didn't have the last name of James attached to his first name, the guy would be, would be coming off the bench for like a D3 screw. I'm sorry. He's just not that good at basketball. That being said, that Ronnie means... James to Miami. <laughs> that being said, exactly. That being said, I will happily take him. Bronny James coming to Miami with all of his faults, okay? Because to your point, John, I do think that means getting LeBron James, all right? And that is a guy that does bring, that he does move the needle forward. He is the polar opposite of what John Wall is because if there's a needle, it's going forward with LeBron James. So with that, I will happily take Bronny James to the Heat. Okay, so Bronny James and LeBron James, what like older or younger superstar do you think we could pull here with LeBron? Because LeBron takes a ton of cap space. Jimmy, like we have no money really spent. So who is like an older player or who do you think could be another like quote unquote star that LeBron and Jimmy Butler could pull into Miami Heat in that situation? Like that would make it a good situation. Can I, I still know. say Damian Lillard? Is that a fair answer? I think so. I think so. I mean, because he is older. He is like on older, the older yeah, side. I think so. That that team makes me scared. I think he's so old. You know what? What is Jimmy Butler? Thirty five. He's he's getting up there. Yeah, he's 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 in his mid thirties. And there's I'm not hearing anything about him getting a, a a contract extension. So I don't know what's going on this off season. But all I know is that we need a superstar. Okay. We need a young superstar. We really. I mean, we Don need, Mitchell will be so sick. We need a young superstar. We need someone else that can space out the, the the floor, all right, on any given game, okay? Because it cannot be, like we have seen time and time again, it cannot be the Jimmy Butler show and the Bam Adebayo show. In my opinion, those are the two guys that are untouchable on this roster. Everyone else is on the table. I don't care. Like, clear out the entire locker room, like, whatever it takes to get another guy. I All love right. Bam, though. I feel like Bam is the only untouchable. He, yeah, him and Jimmy, in my opinion, are the only I untouchables. Even, I mean, if I had to choose, I'd take Bam. It's fucked up, but... I, I would say, yeah, if it if it came down to a situation where we could only keep one, I think right How now... How old is Bam? Like, 25? Yeah, he's not even in his 30s. It's crazy. He's, he's such a beast. He is absolutely sensational. So, a lot more upside to Bam out of bio unfortunately, than right now to Jimmy Butler. Like, our window for a championship is we... Maybe another year, maybe two years. And I think that's being generous. But all I know is like, I'm ready to liquidate anyone and everyone. All right. I will put Tyler here on the table. I would put Jovic on the table. I would put Jaime Hawkes on the table. Kevin Love. I don't care. Kevin who, Love, he's done. Yeah. I, 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 I don't care who you are. If you can provide trade value this offseason, then I think you need to, like, we need to do a fucking garage sale. Like, I just, I'm so frustrated with. The same roster, the same, like, this whole thing about how we're the grittiest, we're the most, you know, we're the toughest team in the NBA, like, that's gotten old. I'm sorry, Miami Heat, like, I love you guys, but, like, we need a fucking guy. It needs to be a Donovan Mitchell. It needs to be someone at the caliber of Luka Doncic, okay? It needs to be someone at the caliber, maybe, like, someone like a Tyrese Maxey. I don't know who it is, but, like, I swear to God, if we go into next season with this same roster... I may legitimately just take a cyanide pill and run to the floor like this next season's opening game because I cannot deal with it. I need to say, I, I, had, I had a revelation. I don't have faith in Jimmy Butler. If we re-give him a, a super contract, like he's older, he's been injured for years now, like every season he gets hurt, it's not going to get any better. He's not going to have some like come to Jesus moment with his body that says, I'm going to be durable now. He's, it's going to get worse. 
Like, I don't think he's going to be able to survive a season. And that's just, and, and, and that's natural, dude. Like, that's just human. Yeah. Like, you can only perform, you can only carry an entire NBA roster on your back for so long yeah. before your back you starts see, you giving up. with LeBron, and LeBron has other superstars. He has yeah. AD, and he still can't do it. He still he has, um, D'Angelo, he had D'Angelo Russell. Like, he had the other, like, players to help him, and it's, he still needed to do more than he could. And that's without him even getting injured. And Jimmy Butler gets fucking injured. So it's like, it's... And and every year, the the, the league is getting statistically younger. Yeah. Because we're getting... They're dogs. These kids young, are dogs. Yeah. Like, dude... Because they see it's blood in the water. They know the opportunity is there. Like, I can be him. Yeah. There's no fucking 30... I watched a thing with um, Meta World Peace. He was talking about how he went to a pickup game. It was like him, Jordan, maybe several other pros... And it was a 15-year-old LeBron. And he was like, in that moment, he knew that this kid could play. This kid, literally kid, 15-year-old, could play in the NBA. And that was, I mean, what? Two decades of him. Yeah. And uh, it's like, yeah, like there's a huge opportunity for, for superstars to be born. So Jimmy Butler's done. I, I think I think Pat Riley must know that. I'm assuming Pat Riley knows ball better than we do. And if we know this simple fact that he's too old, I think he's trying to figure out how to get him off or get him cheap. Yeah, or at least like put him in a, put him up in a trade package to be, maybe bring in like a again Donovan Mitchell. But yeah, bro, it's uh it's been frustrating, dude. Or the Cavs would probably look at a trade package for Donovan Mitchell or Jimmy Butler and be like, "Are you guys on fucking drugs?" Yeah, just like just like Portland was. <laughs> like, are you think we're fucking stupid? Uh, but you know what, Jimmy Butler, I would still welcome to. I would still welcome to keep him. The guy has. He's a dog at the end he's of the a dog. day. Yeah, of course. And I think as long as that guy is able to move, like he's going to be out there. But fighting. he's not a super contract dog. He's. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's me. it's it's getting tough out there. So it's it's going to be a tough off season. I feel like that roster is going to, and I hope it looks different starting next season because if this roster is not completely re- revamped, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. But yeah, we do have the draft to look forward to, and I am hearing a lot of speculative rumors okay and you know how easily i buy into those that the heat are apparently favored to draft zach eddie from purdue that real the big man from purdue john you remember he was making headlines yeah, all over cool. during the ncaa tournament and i would love that okay spolstro if you're watching this i know that you don't love the big man offense you're all around you're all about small ball but that's not working okay like that would we, be cool we've tried the experiment now for a couple of years and we cannot keep doing small ball like, we need size. Holy shit. That's constantly where we get crushed. And I think Zach Eddy would be would be a good addition, okay? I like it. Haters, feel free to DM me and tell me otherwise as to why that's the worst take you've ever heard in the world, but... I think Zach Eddy sucks, but he's fucking 7'5 or something. And I think the Heat is the perfect team for him to, to go develop to, to, to develop and learn how to play actual basketball. Because... There's definitely no way he has any like technical ability whatsoever. He's just literally <laughs> the tallest guy on 100% of the games he plays in. But like Spolstra and the Heat management staff, like I feel like they could really make him into something special. And then Bam Adebayo being like, "Hey, what's up, bro? You're fucking two feet taller than me." <laughs> um, I love it. I think that'd be amazing. I can't think of a better draft pick. But all in all, we'll have to see how the uh, the season goes. I mean, there's a lot of questions up in the. Uh, I mean, is Tyler Hero going to survive? Another another no. uh, off season of trade rumors. No. I think this might be it. Are we keeping Caleb Martin? Are we keeping Jovic? Or you know, well Jaime obviously is uh, is staying, but I, well, you never know. Like I said, I think everyone is fair game aside from Jimmy and Bam, um, and even Jimmy. I think uh, depending on on the trade package, hopefully he's just like flexing his muscles and realizes like, dude, it's over. Like you're not going to get a super contract. If you want to stay with us and be our leader, like, please. But, like, you're not going to get that. So, like, you can – if Jimmy Butler tested the market, he would get gutted. No one – like, no one, no one ever no. realizes. What there's – there's the guy The guy has put up enough of a highlight reel that there will be, like, a Detroit Pistons, a Sacramento Kings. But he's not an idiot. He's, he, 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 he likes the finer things in life. He doesn't want to go to fucking Detroit. Like, he, he wants to go to, like, a big – place he wants to enjoy himself he actually there's i saw a thing where he wants to go he wants to quote unquote finish his career in brazil playing for the flamengo uh club well i don't know dude like jared goff is in detroit and like it is supposed to be a white boy summer like 
Yo, Shanta, so maybe yeah, maybe Shanta, Jimmy Butler's into that. Shout to our boy Luke Tobler, but Detroit is not in. I'm sorry. And then aren't they like the worst team in basketball? Like, aren't they dog shit? They they are pretty fucking terrible. Like, they are they are booty cheeks. They are absolute dog water. I think um, Pat Riley is gonna put put him to the put his 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 chin to the meat grinder and be like, listen, bro, you're in or you're out, and it's not gonna be for the price that you want. That's just this savage sports spectator talk right here. Yeah. I mean, hey. Hey. And if Pat Riley, Spolstra, or any other Heat fan, if you're watching this and you disagree, get in our DMs and refute otherwise. Tell us why. What what roster moves would you make if you had the ability to basically bring in any player? Okay? These are our thoughts. Okay? And, again, I'm, I'm kind of dumb. I'll admit that. All right? Same. So, do you know, you're free to tell me if this is, like, the worst take you've heard. Okay? <laughs> but back it up. <laughs> All right, moving on to a couple other topics. Got to talk about the Dolphins a little bit. Yes, I know we are still what feels like centuries away from the season starting, but we are getting that little bit of that uh, aperitif, which, by the way, coming back from Italy, that means appetizer. So we're getting classy. You guys probably didn't think that we were cultured, but they're giving us a little bit of an appetizer with all of the OTAs that are occurring. Uh, And the big headline, still no contract talks with Tua. What do we think, John? another, Another call by us. I don't think it's happening. And Tua, it's, and it, it's, it's just like the stereotypical business acumen. If you're too soft, you get taken advantage of. And Tua is a beautiful human being, and he's going to get taken advantage of. Are we, are we prepared to make that claim that Tua is soft? He's not soft as an athlete and as a competitor, but he is soft as a kind and beautiful soul. And that's an amazing thing. That's a that's a that's a that's a positive. I'm I like to think of myself that way when I'm when I'm not talking shit about Jimmy Butler and <laughs> Kyrie Irving and the Boston Celtics, but straight up, I really do think that he he. he I, I saw like the news about how he was like taking days off from OTAs and he came to OTAs. Cause he's such a team player. It's like I don't think they're giving him a contract. No, not this season. I do I do agree with that. I'm I'm still sticking to my take that this is pretty much his final year to show. Like to pretty much up his stock value because it's been it's been trending down, I think ever since he's been drafted. You know there'll be spikes here and there. He's he's almost like the GameStop of the NFL, where he'll just have random spikes of crazy performance that no one is aware of, and then again just completely come back down to earth when the market becomes a little bit more rational. Tua is the GameStop of uh of the NFL if we're talking about players being equivalent to uh to stock. Okay, I'm prepared to make that claim, and I'm comfortable with making that claim. All right, and I think John, to your point, I doubt that he's getting a contract unless he agrees to just something so unbelievably cheap that it's just basically another rookie contract. He's not an idiot either. You know, he went to the University of Alabama, and we know that those that university only produces quality, smart individuals. Roll Tide. So he's not going to be one to take to get taken advantage of. I mean, yeah, I, but his stats speak for himself. Like, he's a good quarterback. It's just like, there's this, it's just the moments that he doesn't perform in. And it's like, you know, I'm not going to pretend I'm like some like football analyst, but it's like, you can make, it's, it's two sides of the coin. One, it's not his fault. Two, it is his fault. And, uh, but those are the moments that like, he just gets stained with. Um, like, he, he, he has a, incredible stats. Like, he, he has an, he's had an incredible start to his career. Um, but yeah, that's, and that's stats, you know. Unfortunately, the stat that matters to me are the W's, and that's where we've been lacking are accruing all the W's, accruing playoff playoff uh, match W's. We've been lacking in that, in that department statistically. So, you know, in my opinion, when you're a quarterback well, where all you have is stats, you know, you're the equivalent of the really hot girl at the bar that is just looks and nothing else to show for it. Okay? That's... That's what it is. And I, I know I'm very I'm being very pessimistic this episode, but this past year of witnessing Miami sports has just turned me very, very cynical. I apologize to uh, to you. You're a sensational guy, but you gotta get it done this year, bro. Otherwise, like I think it's it, I think it's within all of our rights to say that we need to find someone else. Dude, okay? OBJ, Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle. And all of our sensational rookies that we just got like we upped the O-line. Okay, we got Patrick Paul, who, by the way, is a fucking beast. That guy is menacing. If he came into my house right now and he said, I live here now, I'd be like, I'm not disputing that. Like, it's your house. 
Squatting rights. Yeah. He'd be like, squatting rights, motherfucker. I'd be like, <laughs> you know, can, can, can I get you a water? Like, <laughs> let me show you around so, so you know the in and outs of the property. Okay. <laughs> um, so no excuses this season. Like, unless he literally gets shot in the leg. I'm sorry. Like, I need to see something this season. Otherwise, Tua, I'm sorry. Then it's it's the bench for you, brother. That And then we're fucked. And then we're fucked. Then at that point. It's all over. At that point, I'm just back to being depressed, and like I finally got my an- uh, off my antidepressants. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I I don't take those. <laughs> just for fun. Just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, dude. I need to see something. I I need I need to see something. I have I have faith. I do. This season, I have faith. I think it all comes around. We need more than faith, John. We need OBJ is the answer. Is he He's coming from a lifelong Cowboys fan who hated him? I really do believe that, like, he, he has an impact. He, he has the itch factor to be in the locker room and, like, really help. Him and Tyreek Hill, like, Tyreek is very wise. I think he learned a lot. He is a leader. I think Tyreek and OBJ combined within each other, like, I think I think that's a great combination of, of leadership. So, yeah. Well, how about this? Think about it. OBJ, for probably one of the first times in his career, this might have been true of Baltimore, but... It's definitely true him being here in Miami. He's now officially the slowest guy in the wide receiver room. Yeah. How crazy is that? Also, LBJ, don't do cocaine on a boat yacht in Miami. Please. Please do not take that that picture. <laughs> Please. <laughs> like if you're gonna do that, just don't take that picture. Like <laughs> what, what that that that's gotta haunt like every single person that took that picture. Like that's gotta just absolutely like haunt them every single day. Or they're just pieces of shit and don't care. Yeah, one that, of the two. One of the There's two. No in between. I think I think that's the Dallas Cowboy fan side of you talking there. Yeah. Um. But yeah, man. OTAs. We're getting we're getting a little bit of the appetizer. Um. You know, I'm not making the, the same mistake that I did uh, last off season of buying into. You know. Basically betting the the house in the kitchen sink, just watching OTA practice. Like, I got to see some wins. I got to see some good wins against good opponents come next season. I got to see some wins in uh, November. I got to see some wins in December. And hopefully some wins come January. Otherwise, to me, this is still same old Dolphins, which I will continue supporting like day in and day out. But, you know, I, I, I just cannot... For my mental health, be as optimistic as I was last season. That's fair. And that's all I got to say about that. That's fair. (laughs) Respectable. All right. Moving on to a couple other topics. Uh, The Marlins. Fun fact, John. Can you guess their record in their last 10 games? Seven and three. Seven and three, baby. That is right. That is net positive if we're only looking at um, at the, uh, the last 10 games. Granted, we are 19 and 35, I believe. Which is, again, not great. I think that puts us second to last in the National League. And I think it puts us, um, well, yeah, dead last for sure in the NL East. Um, so not great. But not the worst team in MLB. But not the worst team in the MLB. And that counts for something. Yeah. All right? We're all about giving credit where credit is due. Okay? And Marlins, if you have nothing else to show for this season, at the very least, you have Fiesta Fridays, <laughs> which is fucking lit. And I dare... Any other team in the MLB in the MLB, okay, to have something as lit as Fiesta Fridays. All right. It's not about the World Series. It's not about the wins and the losses. It's not about winning playoff series. It's not about winning trophies or accolades. It's about who puts up the best party on a Friday night. You know what? And I'm willing to give five hundred to one odds that the Marlins are the team to beat in that category. I agree. Yeah. And you know what? Maybe it's not about the championship, but rather the friends we made along the way. <laughs> it's definitely not about the championship. I know that much is true. So I hope it's about the friends. Yeah. The Marlins, we're, we're your friends. <laughs> but yeah, dude. Um, Marlins are probably going to continue to uh, to stink it up. Um, but you know what? I feel like the Marlins have had it very rough. So I'll be a little bit more. Uh, I'll be a lot nicer to them and say it's okay. You know, hey. We're still beating teams, all right, but you know, we got Fiesta Friday still. Uh, we still got to do what, what, what was what was the, uh, the 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 challenge? Nine beers, nine hot dogs, and nine innings. I'm a, I I really want to do that. I'm gonna throw up. 
but like it sounds so fucking good. It probably sounds really good up until the second or third inning. I think the third inning, and then after the third inning, you're like, damn, I'm only a third of the way through this. <laughs> Dude, that just sounds so. That is like, like, what do you gain from that besides just like calories? Yeah, as long as you don't throw up. Yeah, like you, like I just can't understand the net positive. Of do oh, bragging rights and maybe going viral on the, at the stadium, just throwing it up in the stands. You'll definitely get on the camera, though. You'll definitely get on the jumbo truck. Yeah, I'm convinced of that much. Oh god, not in your brightest moment, though. We will always have Fiesta Fridays. That's that's all I know when it comes to the uh, to the Miami Marlins. But talk about a team that doesn't suck, the Florida Panthers. Now wow. currently down two one in the series against. The New York Rangers, but you know what? You know what? Let me let me let me make a quick callback into this week's episode. You know what? I know I said I hated just the region of New England, but honestly, like fuck the entire Northeast. All right, that includes Maine, that includes Delaware, that includes New York, that includes Connecticut, that includes okay, all of that. Just that whole region in general. Like, what do you have to show? For your existence. Okay. And yes, I understand that that is technically where America was founded from, et cetera, et cetera. But modern day, I cannot think of a single good thing that the Northeast offers. Okay. That's all I got to say. All I'm, right. trying, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to rebuttal this as a born and raised New Yorker, but uh, <laughs> I'm having a hard time. Yeah, that's right, John. Because you can't even think of it. Like mm. you lived it and you breathed it. Bagels. Ta- bagels. Pizza. We got those here. I had pizza in Italy, way better than any pizza I've had in New York. Okay. Well, I've been dumbfounded. Yeah. Statue of Liberty. Um, we have the border. The border. <laughs> yes. The new Statue of Liberty. Do you guys like that one? <laughs> Hope so. I'm not going to go into any more detail. Oh boy. <laughs> oh God. But yes, the Panthers like. They are our current pride and joy here in South Florida. Um, and speaking of which, next week we will have a very special guest who can actually talk about hockey. Because Lord knows that gun to my head, I could not give you a hockey take um, if I tried. So as a justice to our hockey fans of this podcast, we will be bringing you a very special guest who will actually be giving some very, very insightful takes around the Panthers. Hopefully by this time next week, we're still very much in this series. I know yeah. we will be. But again, stay tuned for next week, Panthers. But you know what? Aside from that, go Cats, go Panthers. Fuck New York. Fuck the Rangers. Okay? Just fuck that whole region in general. With all due respect With to all you, due John. Respect. With all due respect. Meow. <laughs> all right, baby. I think all, all we have left uh, to discuss today is uh, Inter-Miami. John, if you want to give us some quick updates. Yeah, Inter-Miami is still first place. And, uh, you know, we just went to Vancouver. Messi... Uh, Luis Suarez and Sergio Busquets didn't travel. The executives of Vancouver were up in arms and crying because they price gouged their tickets and tried to profit off of Messi, like every other team. And uh, we didn't even have him go up there. He stayed for his son's soccer game in Miami like a good father, unlike the Canadians up there. And then we still smoked him 2-1. So Inner Miami are cruising. Uh, it's an amazing season, as we all expected. Nothing too exciting to really update there, but... um. Actually, Di Maria from Argentina, Messi's teammate, might actually be coming. It's, it's the latest rumor. Oh. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But besides that, we just we just keep cruising. We're in first place in the MLS, most goals scored. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much that. Does Di Maria, is he like the opposite of John Wall? Like, does he still have years he left? He still has. Him? He's oh. still a stud. Yeah, he's good. He's Dude, good. we love that. We love that. By the way, and if you're hearing the reggaeton in the background, again, you know, we're coming to you live from, like, this is as Miami as it fucking gets. All right? Golly. And if you don't like it, I don't know. Move somewhere else. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. You, you you know what I learned about Messi? That um, his wife, Antonella, uh-huh. they were apparently, like, childhood friends yes. their entire life. That's so f- – that's crazy. That is crazy. Dude, the guy just has it made. Like, he marries a fucking – since, like, basically his best friend, who also just ends up being ridiculously hot. I was waiting for you to say that part because it's facts. <laughs> and yeah. ends up being essentially like the best player in the world. Like, I, I, I'm almost wondering, like, how much shit did he have to put up with in, like, previous lives, okay, to then be reincarnated and have this life? I'm just like, 
Holy shit, dude. Like, what a W. If you believe in reincarnation, we want to hear your take on that. Yeah, what, what, was, what were Messi's previous lives to get the one he has yeah. today? Like, he must have just gone through so much hell and back that, like, you know, the powers that be basically said, all right, this go around, this is going to be your story. We got right. you. Yeah, we, we, we got you, buddy. Like, you, you, you paid your dues in these past lives. Like, I learned about that recently, and I was like, wait, no way. Like, I, I, I just assumed that it was, like, Ronaldo, that he just walked into a jewelry and was like, oh, you're really attractive. Like, do you want to no, be my wife? Yeah. But, no, it was a very genuine, wholesome, like, uh, I, I saw it on Twitter. Like, someone literally presented a timeline of, like, a bunch of pictures when they were, like, little kids up until today. I'm just like, wow. Like, what a story. Yeah. Like, can't even hate on that. Like, but uh, you can definitely be envious. Yep. That's for sure. So, I don't know what what that entails to enter Miami season because uh, I'm sure a lot of people knew that John being one of them. Uh, but Messi, you're a good guy. You're all right. You're a good guy, bro. You're a good guy. Keep it up. <laughs> don't let don't let other people in Miami tell you otherwise. Like or Boston fans, yeah, or Boston fans. Like stay faithful to your wife. <laughs> don't let people in Miami tell you otherwise. All right, dude. I think that does it for today's episode. Um, you know, we said all of our cancelable mater- uh, material. Yep. Okay. We, we said got it off our chest. We got it off our chest. Okay. So we'll see you guys for episode 26. I don't know what quirky thing 26 relates to, but next week, special guest. We'll be talking Panthers the whole time. Keep it here. Peace.